Well, Hasbro have been having a bit of a bad run just lately, so I thought I would switch things up and talk about a few recent products that I really, really like. And that's these three G.I. Joe classified figures. We've got Spirit Iron Knife, Croc Master, and Storm Shadow. And although I was very vocal about my dislike for the first few waves of G.I. Joe classifiers, you know, waves at least like one through four, I really didn't like them. The Hasbro design team working on G.I. Joe classifieds is starting to course correct the brand. And these figures, they're pretty decent. Let's take a look at them. Stay tuned. Come with me, toy fans. Hey toy fans, my name is Tony and welcome back to the Analog Toys YouTube channel. And the first figure that we're going to look at is Spirit Iron Knife. This figure comes in the kind of stock standard window box, which is obviously going to be a thing of the past moving forward. But one of the things with this whole line that I don't like is that every single figure pretty much has a different artist and a different art style. Again, not a huge deal for me. I'm not a mint in box collector. I like to collect these figures loose. But one of the best parts of the packaging of early G.I. Joe was the fact that the art style remained the same for years and years and years. And here we have all these different styles. I'm going to get onto the other boxes later, but I don't like the artwork for Spirit Iron Knife. I do, however, really like the figure. Spirit here with his tan combat pants, his brown boots and his blue shirt is very reminiscent of the original 1980s Spirit action figure. It's not identical, but they have drawn heavy inspiration from the original design of the character. It is a shame that we don't have pinless elbows and knees, but overall the sculpt is very good. And the articulation, all the joints are quite tight, which was a big gripe of mine with some of the early figures. I mean, I acquired the very, very first G.I. Joe classified figure, the, the deluxe snake eyes, you know, the, the zero zero figure. And his torso articulation was loose as hell. But that's not a problem on this figure here or any of these three figures that I'm reviewing today. Spirit has an excellent head sculpt and even with the kind of ponytails coming down forward off the shoulders, quite often with long hair on an action figure, you'll find it will restrict the head movement. Um, but that's not the case here. We still get a really decent range of head movement with this figure. Spirit comes with two different knives. We've got a sidearm and then his sniper rifle. But I'm going to talk about that sniper rifle last. Let's take a look at his pet eagle, Freedom. We have articulated legs, an articulated neck. The wings are somewhat articulated, but the best feature is that there is an alternate pair of wings. So you can either have Freedom kind of perched there with his wings down, just sitting around scanning the area, or you can swap the components out and have some widespread wings so he can look like he's about to take flight or he's in flight, however you choose to pose him. Freedom also has a peg on the underside of each foot. And there are two different places on the spirit action figure where you can perch this eagle. The first of which is on this post on the side of the backpack. Have spirit standing there with freedom perched just behind his shoulder. And before I received this figure and actually took it out of the packaging, I thought this was gonna be one of those examples where the figure was really gonna need a display stand. Cause I thought with that extra weight sitting on his shoulder, he was easily gonna to topple over. But thanks to, you know, some quite uh, beefy boots on this figure and some very tight, solid articulation, Spirit easily stands up unaided with freedom perched on his backpack. Spirit's also got a gauntlet or whatever you call it, covering his left forearm and freedom can be perched in this position as well. And even with his arm outstretched to one side and the weight of freedom sitting on it, this figure still stands upright very, very easily. There is no need for a figure stand. This is an excellently designed figure that can pose with all of his equipment on with no risk of him toppling off your display shelf. Overall, I'd give this figure a nine out of 10. That one missing point though, is for that damn sniper rifle. And I don't have an issue with the sculpting or the paintwork or anything like that. It's that when you put this rifle into Spirit's hand and try and get him to shoulder it, this rifle is clearly too small for him. If he gets the butt of the rifle right into his shoulder, he can't get his head and eye correctly positioned behind the scope. And if you push the rifle forward so that he can look down the scope, when he fires that rifle and it's not securely in his shoulder because it's sitting that far forward, it's gonna go all over the place and he'd be the worst sniper in the world. And this is just another example of the lack of 
firearms knowledge that has been evident within the Hasbro G.I. Joe design team from the very start. Now let's talk about Bane. I mean, Clockmaster. Let's talk about Clockmaster. Once again, much like Spirit, this is a very nicely sculpted figure. Unfortunately, it's not pinless. And even though I did have this figure in childhood, I really don't have much of a nostalgic connection to it because I had a lot of G.I. Joe figures in childhood. And, and this is one of the figures that I kind of got later on into my childhood collection. I got this figure, I think around 1988. And he has such a outlandish, fantastical design. It just doesn't fit in with the more real world military G.I. Joe, which is what I prefer over the later sci-fi fantasy stuff. Crocmaster comes with a very dull looking revolver. He's got a boot knife, which isn't too bad, a whip, and some kind of a butcher's hook. And I can really take or leave this figure. I'm really not that fussed about him. But what makes this set such a must-have for a G.I. Joe classified collector is the crocodile. It is beautifully sculpted. The paintwork is fantastic. It has decent articulation with joints at all four of the hips, all four of the ankles. We've got upper torso articulation, neck articulation, and the best of all, the opening jaw. You'll see when this jaw opens up, you can see all the gum line extend up with it. It's brilliantly, brilliantly done. There's some nice paintwork on the teeth. And then of course we have the bendy wire tail, which is the perfect design choice for this type of a creature. What is completely superfluous to this set though, is the two mini crocodiles. They're just not needed. I'm, I'm never ever gonna use these for anything. This crocodile, I'll be using this for a lot of different photography, videos, displays. I love this thing. Finally, this crocodile comes with a leash and collar, much like the original 1980s Croc Master action figure did. The collar simply slips over the front of his head and there's a handle on the end of the leash for Croc Master to you know, take control of his beast. But what would have really taken this particular item to the next level would have been if they had have actually provided either a real metal chain or even plastic chain links like you get with the Motu Origins Ninja or Nunchucks. But having a simulated chain, like molded in one long piece of PVC, it just doesn't hang the way a chain would hang when you're trying to pose this figure. It's just a big piece of bendy rubber. But overall, while Croc Master is an easy pass for me, you gotta get this set for the crocodile. I'm actually thinking about going out and getting a couple more because, you know, a group of crocodiles, so well made like this one is, I think I need them in my collection. And something I forgot to mention was the artwork on this particular box. Again, it's a completely different style. Hasbro, the Hasbro G.I. Joe team seem to be obsessed with using different artists for every different character. And I think that's a big mistake. I think uniformity in the art design would make this packaging a lot more displayable as a collection for those people who are mint in box collectors. But I've saved the best for last. Let's take a look at this new version of Storm Shadow. Once again, we've got the standard G.I. Joe classified series window box. And this artwork, eh, 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 I don't know, whatever. But the figure, holy moly, this is gorgeous. It's not completely perfect, but it is getting so close to it. I don't have every figure in the G.I. Joe classified range, far from it. But of the ones that I do have and that I've had the opportunity to play around with, this is the best figure that they have made to date. Beautifully sculpted and completely pinless. I don't quite understand why they were able to make this figure pinless, but not make Spirit and Crocmaster pinless. And it certainly elevates this particular figure above a lot of the other G.I. Joe classified figures that we've been offered to date. Here we have Storm Shadow in his classic 80s look with the white outfit, the black sash and cross belt, the Cobra logo on the chest, the bare arms. The one thing that a lot of people don't like, and I agree with them, is the gloved gauntlet type things for, for the archery. Storm Shadow back in the 80s had bare hands. And the most frustrating thing is that after everyone kind of rushed out and pre-ordered this figure, not too long later, Hasbro brought out a retro version of Storm Shadow, which I don't believe is shipped yet, but they gave him the ungloved hands, the perfect classic look. Why not just give us that straight off the bat and not even mess around with these two almost identical action figures, just one on a flimsy card back that's gonna get destroyed whenever someone at Walmart folds it over and puts it in a mailer box for you, and this other one that's in a box that's like 99% of the way there. 
The wraps around the lower legs are very nicely sculpted and I really like the paint wash that's been used on here to give it a real nice bit of added texture. Storm Shadow's got a very cool looking backpack slash arrow quiver, whatever you wanna call it. It can house both his short and long sword. You can also mount the bow onto the backpack. And this figure comes with a single arrow that you can either use for your archery poses or when not in use, there is actually a tiny hole for it to slot in and it fits in seamlessly with the other molded in arrow heads at the top of the quiver. The one thing I really don't like about this action figure is the hood accessory. When you put the hood accessory on, it just doesn't quite sit right and it looks a little bit oversized. Fortunately, the design team has given us an alternate option here where you can do away with the hood and just attach a neck piece that kind of simulates the hood in its folded down position. And this is my preferred way to display this Storm Shadow action figure. The articulation is superb. You can get him into some really, really nice poses here. I mean, overall, this figure is just, it's damn cool. It's a really, really nicely done figure. And I'm very happy with it. And this is evidence of the G.I. Joe team course correcting in the right direction. But they're still making a lot of little mistakes that get their figures kind of 80, 90% of the way there but prevent them, and they're silly mistakes, and they prevent these figures from being perfect. A really good example is the new pre-order for the Falcon action figure. He has water bottles sculpted into his radio backpack that are far too small for this scale of action figure. He's wearing gaiters over his boots, which is a huge mistake. A figure like this should just be wearing jungle boots. And that face sculpt is ugly. I mean, he's got a mouth that looks like Willem Dafoe. But the thing I dislike most about Falcon is the choice of firearm. This shotgun is just ridiculous and it doesn't suit this character. And before anyone wants to jump in the comments and say to me, hey, the original Falcon came with a shotgun. Surely I'm not the only kid back in the late 80s who got this figure, thought it was really cool, but also thought, why the hell does he come with a shotgun? It just doesn't fit this type of Vietnam era Green Beret action figure. When I was a kid, I always swapped out Falcon shotgun for the M16 with Starlight Scope that came with the Snowcats Frostbite action figure. And this looks way, way better on Falcon than that silly shotgun. But what does any of that even matter? M16, shotgun, they're just called blasters these days, folks. I know distribution on the G.I. Joe classified line has been frustrating collectors for quite some time, the fact that they seem to really struggle to find these at retail. But if you do happen to come across any one of these three figures on a shelf and you're a fan, of one to 12 scale GI Joe, I highly recommend picking them up. So thank you all for watching. And if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to check out some of our other GI Joe content, you can click the links up here or subscribe to the channel by clicking down there or consider joining us on Patreon, where as soon as you sign up, you'll get access to hours and hours of exclusive content. I'm Tony from Analog Toys and I'll see you in the next video.